Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to this special, slightly controversial, but interesting episode of Smart Jannah. Smart Jannah! <laughs> This video is a thanks to Ali Dawa who called me up and said Let's do a video on Pablo Escobar And I was like Yes! While I was researching it was like going down the rabbit hole I just found out so many things from so many sources and it was just really really interesting I managed to you know learn a lot of stuff and I found a lot of things interesting so I wanted to make a separate video which is here right now and I thought I'd add a bit more detail and a bit more context that I'd be able to do on say his uh, channel and uh, let's start. Now drugs, we've all been told drugs is bad for us. Why? Because it's true. But has everybody been actively working towards curbing this habit or is it in some people's interests to ensure that we stay crack and cokeheads. My name is Gary Webb. I am an investigative journalist. I've been an investigative journalist for about 25 years for daily newspapers. And in 1996, I wrote a series of stories entitled Dark Alliance, uh, which was about CIA involvement in drug trafficking. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective and I work South Central Los Angeles. And I will tell you, Director Deutsch, the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs> Uh, I was able to name operations. Peggy. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus and Watchtower. Now since World War II, America has been obsessed with the communist threat. So what they've done is intervened in many countries. In fact, the bare minimum countries they've intervened in since World War II is 70 under the pretense of curbing communism. In fact, the Bavarian Illuminati was an issue in the 1790s, Catholicism 1850s and then communism of course 1900s and now Islam in the 2000s. The point is if you want to know what is going on now just check your history. Not from the textbooks <coughs> not from the media and terrestrial TV or Sky Digital or whatever, not getting your books from WH Smith, you'll have to get your information from alternative media. But anyway, I digress. I'm going to jump straight to Laos. In 1957, America invaded Laos because of communism. Now let's fast forward that a bit. They're in the country but suddenly they are flying out opium. They're refining opium and they're importing opium as well. What's opium? I hear you ask. Well, opium is used to make heroin and Laos, if you guys didn't know, is part of something known as the Golden Triangle, which is pretty much the center of heroin trade. Yeah, the three main countries, which is Laos, Myanmar and Thailand. And alongside that is something called the Golden Crescent, yeah, which is in the center of Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. So these are the heroin hotspots. So America used Laos to backpedal, push heroin to such a degree that Laos became the supplier of 70% of the world's heroin, 30% of US heroin. Why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm telling you this because sometimes in order to understand what's going on now, what the governments uh, are capable of, it's important for us to learn a bit about our history to see what the governments were capable of in the past. In 1980, yeah, America saw the threat of communism in Nicaragua. Nicaragua was very close to home so America was very interested in what's going on in Nicaragua. So there was a group called the Sandinistas, yeah. Now America was worried that they're very close to the communism and the commun communists might use them to gain control and then eventually come to America. Opposing the Sandinistas were some people known as the Contras. 
yeah now the Contras were very dodgy people they were raping the people there were loads of human rights violations the Americans were supporting the Contras to get rid of the Sandinistas now this was public news but then after the human rights scandals and everything America couldn't publicly support the Contras so they had to find another way now Nicaragua, a side note, it was very well known for its cocaine. So then America had to find another way that they could fund the Contras, which is known as the Iran Contra scandal. This happened in 1985. America was secretly giving arms to Iran. Now, Iran's leader at the time was Ayatollah Khomeini which the Americans did not like. In fact, they had hostages of Americans as well. So America was giving arms to Iran. Now this was crazy. Why were they doing that? Because they knew the money that they would get, they would take some, but the rest they would give to the Contras to help them beat the Sandinistas. The other way was that the CIA allowed cocaine to come into the US so they could make money through drug sales. Now in the 1980s there was a big influx of crack cocaine. The men who were working for the CIA's army were responsible for bringing all that cocaine into Los Angeles that sparked the crack epidemic. This gave rise to the big names. Yeah, you got Pablo Escobar uh, who became big. Are you aware of whether or not narcotics proceeds at some time may or may not have supported Contra efforts? Yes sir, narcotics proceeds were used to shore up the uh, Contra effort. I'm going to tell you about this guy called Rick Ross. Every day I'm hustling, no, hustling. not the fat guy with you know, he's actually taken the name from one of the biggest kingpins of LA at that time, Freeway Ricky Ross. Yeah, so Freeway Ricky Ross was such a big timer that he was literally making millions in a day, three million per day. In fact, after his drug dealing lifestyle, they estimate him to have made about a billion dollars. Of course you can watch his documentary, Al Jazeera has done a two part documentary called uh, Freeway uh, Cracking the System. I'd recommend you to watch that. He actually admits in coming into contact with Contras and then they would be the suppliers and they would of course import crack cocaine into America. Then they started the war on drugs. Hang on a minute, you're probably thinking the war on drugs, which war on drugs? CIA are allowing crack cocaine to enter the country, but that was higher up. Yeah, lower down, you gotta keep the people in control you see. What the government would do is, you know, for small possession, people would be slung in prison, long sentences, and it was just the war on drugs was mad. When the drugs did come in, they, they were coming into the poor African neighborhoods. Yeah, not the rich neighborhoods, the poor African neighborhoods because they're just black people and if they die who's gonna really notice to be honest. Yeah, and these aren't my words, Yeah, it's from the documentary. Third on the list was Afghanistan. In 1979 to around 1992, the Mujahideen in Afghanistan were funded by the CIA in America and of course I'm sure you guys have seen the the documentary film by Michael Lowe called Fahrenheit 9-11 where Mujahideen were and the Taliban were invited into the US and they were you know given a tour and they were seen as the good guys. So the Americans funded the Taliban but the Taliban in those days were exactly the same yeah the women supposedly according to American standards didn't have rights etc but that didn't bother them why because the Taliban were useful so they supported the Taliban to fight the Soviet Union so it's estimated that they were given billions and billions of dollars now those of you that were paying attention at the start I was talking about the golden triangle and of course the golden crescent center of the golden crescent is yes Afghanistan which is a major exporter of opium. So America used opium and facilitated the selling of opium and then used that to fund the Taliban, the Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, whatever name you want to give them to fight against the Soviets yeah, and against communism. 50% of the heroin that came into the US was from Afghanistan. 
and 80% that went into the world was from Afghanistan. When the Mujahideen were there, there was also a party that was opposing the Taliban. Yeah, they were standing up for women's rights and all of this sort of stuff, but they were not supported by America and nor was this made like a central issue. That brings us into Colombia. Yeah, Colombia is the highest exporter of cocaine. Now Colombia is very close to America. In fact, it's called the surrogate country to America. Yeah, like you know, a surrogate baby. And they are the fourth largest receiver of money benef benefits from the US. Of course, America is present in Colombia. To the outside world, the excuse that's given is drugs. But of course, the internal reason is something different because Colombia is very close. America can kind of keep an eye on the other kind of rogue countries like Venezuela and Bolivia. These countries aren't very pro US. And Venezuela is, you know, neck and neck with Saudi in producing oil. Yeah, they're very oil rich countries. So America needs to be there just to keep an eye on them. Uh, so they're using Colombia to train an army called the Southern Unified Army. So they're using the people from those nations and training them up just in case something goes wrong. So governments prefer drug money because you don't have to disclose drug money. Yeah, You don't have to put it through Congress, the Senate or get permission from the public. It's done through the back back doorway. Yeah, And it's important that we know about this so that when we are in an influential position or when our children grow up, then they know what sort of society they're living in so they can correct it. Yeah, If you don't know what the problem is, how are you going to fix it? Some of you are probably wondering, you said a load, lot of stuff mate, where'd you get this from? Yeah, I recommend a very good book, it's called Kill, Killing Hope by William Blum. What he does is he goes through the countries uh, since World War II. So he's gone through around about, about I think 50 countries, just over 50 countries that the US has interfered. In, in fact, if you're not really into reading big books, this is more like a reference book, then I'll put a link in the description, which is a link to the article that has summarized this book page by page. There's another good book by John Perkins called The Secret History of the American Empire. And this is another good book called Secrets and Lies by David Southwell. Don't forget to check out the video on Ali Dawa's channel. Until next time, Keep reading guys and if you made it till the end of the video, congratulations, uh, mashallah excellent. Don't forget to like this video because the likes that accumulate really do help and uh, until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.